Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mike. Um, working with a new griddle today. Gonna be, it's the uh, Blackstone 28. I don't know if I can show you. It's actually going through the seasoning process right now. Um, that made me think about one of my articles that gets a lot of traffic on Google, and that is five, what you should be doing with a new griddle, right? So I wrote one saying five things you should do with a new griddle. It's linked down below. Um, but we'll go through that right now since I'm sitting out here killing time waiting for this thing to turn from pretty to black. And so the first thing after you've assembled your griddle, you kind of got it ready and you're thinking about all your recipes, is you're gonna wanna wash it, right? So we don't use soap on our griddle, especially blackstone griddles because of that cast iron style surface. And if we use soap as we go through time with it, after we cook, we'll kill the seasoning and it won't be nonstick and you'll just be frustrated with your griddle. But the first thing, I always wash it when I first get it because it came from a factory, it's been traveling, it's been in a box, it's got dust particles, it's got who knows what, right? So I just go ahead and give it a soapy bath the very first time I get it and that's before I do any seasoning. So number one, when you first get a griddle after putting it together would be to wash your griddle surface. I'm not so much worried about the body and the body and legs and all that stuff, but that griddle surface that's gonna be getting seasoned, that part matters because you wanna get a good clean base before you throw in your first layer of oil for your seasoning. All right, and tip number two, well, it's not really number two, but let's just do it anyway. When you lay your griddle cover on the ground and your dog, Hanko, thinks that's where he sleeps, good boy. You can see here, we're on the first layer of oil. And we're already starting to get some blackening and browning. Get some debris from, it's a little windy today. But it got a bath before we started. It started somewhat in a good spot. Can't really control much of the breeze today. It's just a little windy. All right, so number two is going to be selecting an oil you want to work with. And that's going to be a cooking oil of your choice. Um, things you want to take in mind and keep in consideration is going to be flavor, because that's obviously going to have a big impact on your griddle and your food. Um, and then beyond that, you're going to want to think about smoke point, right? So you don't want to get an oil with a very low smoke point, because then when you try to do something at a higher heat, sear a steak, something like that, this thing's going to be smoking up a storm, and you're not going to be able to cook with your food the way you want to. So. Um, this time I'm going to try to something new. I'm going to do the first layer with some grapeseed oil and then I'm going to follow it up with an avocado and olive oil blend. Now this isn't the Blackstone conditioning seasoning stuff that they recommend. This isn't anything that anyone else is recommending. It's just something I'm going to try with this griddle and kind of see how it works out. So um, number two when you get a griddle is going to be selecting a cooking oil and remember flavor and smoke point. All right, so number three is going to be seasoning your new griddle. Um, you definitely don't want to cook any food, put any kind of substances on it before you've done a seasoning process. The seasoning process doesn't take that long. It does require, you know, the seasoning, seasoning oil you have, some paper towels or kitchen rags, some either high heat gloves or just tongs that you can use to move the oil around while the surface is really hot. But essentially, you're just gonna get your griddle, first off, step one, you're gonna get it clean, then you're gonna select your oil, then you're gonna get your griddle very hot, I just run it on high till it gets super hot. Thin layer of oil. Um, it'll start to burn off kind of like it's doing now. And once that's burnt off, you can add another layer and just let that go on. You'll use the tongs because so it's going to be hot. You let it heat, um, let that heat go ahead and cook it off again. Wait till the smoke is done. And then you'll add a third one. Some people go a fourth one. Usually three to four is really all you're going to need. Um, what you don't want to do is over oil it and, and or not let the oil completely burn off. So if you over oil it and you don't let the oil completely burn off, you're gonna have a sticky griddle surface and it's not gonna be any fun to cook with and you're gonna be irritated thinking something's wrong with your Blackstone griddle, when in fact it just didn't get a chance to really burn off all that oil and you're working with kind of a gummy substance on the top. What you want is that burnt on, like calcified um, oil base layer that's gonna give you that non-stick uh, surface that you need. This dude's hanging out in the sun and it's freezing still in Colorado. All right, so when I go to add another layer on this, I will take some paper towels, just a few here. I will fold them up, trying to do this one-handed. Get them into a position I can work with. And then when it's on the griddle surface, I will use my spatula here to kind of move it around because it's gonna to be too hot for you to do it with your bare hands. We still got some smoke coming off of this, so I'll give it some more time before I add the next layer.
All right, guys, so that's going on, as you can see. That's that last layer. We've got a nice finish on there. So the seasoning process is done. It only took maybe 30 minutes, 15, 30 minutes. Um, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do after you've cleaned it, you've seasoned it, you've selected your oil, you've kind of gone through the whole thing, you're ready to cook a meal. Now, you can go jump right in and cook a meal, but there's one thing that will actually be helpful to you, and that is learning the heat zones of your griddle. So all the griddles that you're gonna find out have heat zones based on the burners, the shape of them, depending on the brand you buy, whether it's Blackstone, Cam Chef, Blue Rhino, it's not really gonna matter. Just know that your griddle, based on its size and manufacturer, will have slightly different heat zones from griddle to griddle. And the best way to do it that I've found is using a laser thermometer and you can kind of just point it at it and find where the hot spots are, where the weaker spots are, and that'll let you know where you can warm food versus where you can sear food and then kind of everything in between. So number four will be learning your heat zones. All right, so number five is gonna be just know the griddle accessories you will actually kind of need. I hate to use the term need, you're gonna need something. But when it comes to griddle cooking, if you haven't done it before and you don't have certain tools, it can still be done, but it's gonna just be more challenging and extra work. And these accessories are not expensive and I'm not selling you any of these. It's just something I definitely recommend. So the first would be just to get a griddle spatula set with it comes with a scraper and a couple of these, you know, longer griddle spatulas. And then beyond that, um, bottles. So somebody asked me what goes in the bottles. I usually keep two bottles on hand. One is going to hold my cooking oil and one is going to hold water like this one's got in it right now. Um, Blackstone makes bottles. A lot of companies make bottles. This was just a little cheap set from Walmart. Um, and so having those bottles on, on your griddle station makes it a lot easier to cook and clean when you're using it. Um, and then outside of that, I definitely recommend some cleaning tools. I do use this cast iron scraper. It's like for a traditional cast iron pan, but it does a good job of scraping off your griddle food um, as well as your griddle scraper itself. But sometimes this will get in some good corner spots. And then I also use a chainmail um, cast iron scraper, which is great for cast iron pans and your griddle surface if you want to remove food without having to break out soap and ruin your finish. It's a good way to get everything off. So finishing off the five things to do with a new griddle is going to be those. And then now I will cook some burgers and hash browns for the kids. And then I will just go through a quick cleaning All with right, you. Guys. So I'm going to be cooking some frozen burgers on the griddle today because, well, I'm fancy. So because we just went through the seasoning process, I am going to reduce the heat down. And then I'm going to, once it's down pretty low, I'm gonna put the burgers on. That way they can sit in that low heat with the hood on, hood closed and that'll allow them to kind of defrost and de, you know, thaw out, and then I can go ahead and add seasoning from there. All right, so one important thing I have out here in the garage I forgot to tell you guys about, and that is these uh, inserts, 10 inserts for your grease trap in the Blackstone. Now, yes, it's built in with one that will go ahead and catch all the grease, and it does what it should there. I don't know if you can see it. But by simply placing in these cheap tin drop-ins, I can cook, shove all the grease and crap back into that grease tin, pull out the insert, crumple it up and throw it in the trash, versus pulling out the metal grease trap, washing it, going through all that. It's kind of a mess. So those are cheap, easy, and save you a lot of time. Also, let's check in on this. All right, so those are starting to thaw out, and my concrete is uneven in my back porch here, so. Everything's dripping towards me, but I'll let those fully thaw and then I'll add just some salt, pepper, garlic, sea salt, pepper, and garlic, and we will add cheese once it's ready. All right, so these are ready to be split, and as you can see, it's already doing, it's already pretty non-stick as it is, but it gets way better with time. Each time you cook on this, we're adding a new layer of fat and grease every single time, and we clean it off not using any soap, and it just builds and builds over time. Now look, if you see, these were all put on at the same time. This one that was over here in this corner is the least cooked, and this one over here in this corner is the most cooked. So just by glancing, without even using a thermal gun there, you can tell that this spot right here is gonna be one of your hot zones, and this is gonna be a cooler zone. All right, so these are pretty much done. Everything is looking good. I will pull these off, and then we will clean this disgusting. All right guys, so the food's done. It's time to clean the griddle. You will see this is a pretty quick process and uh, we'll be done in no time. All right, so look at that. We have a nasty griddle still smoking. I like to leave the griddle hot while I do this because 
I, I don't leave it on full heat, I leave it about medium, but you'll, the reason is, I'm going to use this bottle of water, oh, and you just saw a little bit go right there. While it's still hot, it'll boil and kind of sanitize that surface after I get all this junk off, and that's a pretty simple process too. Take your grill spatula or scraper. gunk on there, right? And that is pretty typical in the beginning while well, you don't have a full seasoning. You know, if you think of your grandparents' cast iron or your cast iron, it didn't start super non-stick. It took years of cooking on it. And this is the same principle. But that'll loosen up a bunch of stuff right there. See all that junk came off on there. Now I'll get another water paper towel. Right, so I will spray it. See the hot spot again on the left side? Knowing those heat zones will really help you out when you're cooking. Alright. So that super hot surface. And it's nice and smooth here when you do this. Alright, so that. So that is pretty much done. I'm gonna do one last little, just make sure I get the last of the gunk. I apologize for this being so goofy, it is one-handed, which I'm not exactly used to doing. So it looks like right there, I got a little bit of food left on there. Hey, get out of there. So, if you look, now we got this nice surface. Look who's trying to get the paper towels busted. Alright, so I will leave this with just a thin layer of oil. Keep in mind, it's already hot. want to leave your griddle 
Just a thin, thin layer. And I mean, thin. oh boy, I already poured too much. Jeez. Do as I say, not as I do. That's the slogan, right? So, I will sop up a bunch of this. I'm sure everybody at home is probably drunk by now watching me try to film this with one hand and shaking the camera, but there you have it. You got, you got a clean griddle, aside from this massive mess I made right here. All right, clean griddle, and it is ready to be put away. That took, with all my nonsense, one hand, and it took five minutes to give you an idea. All right, guys, hopefully this was helpful. I don't even know if you can see me right now because I'm still doing this one-handed, but there it is. The five things to do with the first griddle, the first meal on it, and the first cleanup. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.